Let me try to get right to the point today. Whatever is bothering you, if something's on your mind, if something's making your day hard, do not focus on that. Jesus wants you to focus on yourself. So other people right now, they are not the problem in your life. You're the problem, sorry. And if something is taking away your peace, that is your choice. So the key word today from the gospel is defile. And so the Pharisees and the scribes, they think that if you don't wash your hands before eating, you're defiled. You can't actually worship God properly. And that's a bit analogous to what a lot of us think. You say, I can't pray because I'm too tired. I'm too busy. So what you're actually saying is, my fatigue and my busyness is defiling me. Let's say you're mad about something at someone your spouse, your parents, your children. You're saying, oh, they're defiling me. And lastly, a lot of us are saying, life is so much harder. It's so hard because of COVID. COVID's defiling me. So the text says, Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile them. But the things that come out of a person are what defile them. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within and they defile a person. So this message is so important. Jesus says, to the crowd, you have to come back. I want you to hear this. I want you to listen to this. There is nothing outside of us that can defile us. So not the people we work with, not the people we live with, not our situation. That can defile us. Now think about this. Jesus, when he was dying on the cross, did he get defiled? No. When he was suffering, not defiled. When Mary saw her son died, she didn't get defiled. So nothing can actually separate you from God. What is it, here's a question for you, what is it that keeps you close to God? There's one thing, I'm looking for one word that unites you to God. What is it? Love. But love is from the inside. So nothing can change that. The things that come out of a person are what defile them. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. The famous Russian uh, writer, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, he wrote, If only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. So this comes from a man who spent 11 years in a communist prison, 11 years of hell, 11 years of torture, and it would have been easy for him just to blame the Marxists. They're all evil, I'm innocent, and what makes my life horrible? It's all the Marxists, but he didn't do that. The line that divides good and evil, it's in the human heart. And that happens a lot in Canada. There's a lot of blaming going on in Canada. It's part of our culture now. So the thinking goes, you know what, if only we could get those people in Canada who cause all the problems, if only they would change, Canada would be better. You know, when I was writing this homily, there is um, someone who reminded me, a lot of people have that victim mentality. What's a victim mentality? They act helpless when they can actually do something. They never say anything's their fault. They'll never say anything's their fault. They're always complaining about other people. They're always predicting doom and gloom, and the misfortune that they suffer, it's always exaggerated. Yeah, all of us suffer, but they always exaggerate it, and it's a big lie. So Jesus then gives us 12 examples of evil that comes from our heart, and six of these are sinful actions, six of these are sinful inclinations. So fornication, that's any sex before marriage. Theft, murder, adultery, Avarice is greed, greed. 
Wickedness, I looked everywhere in theological textbooks. I looked online. I, I couldn't find exactly what sin this is referring to. But the point is, don't do it. I don't want any of you to do it, whatever it is. Deceit is obviously lying, tricking other people. Licentiousness is like a shocking indecency. Envy, slander, pride, and folly, of course, is being foolish. And Jesus reminds us at the end, these are choices that we make and they defile us. So whenever I hear this teaching of Jesus, this gospel, I, actually, I, I get really happy. Because my natural inclination is to blame all of you <laughs> for you get me mad. And then I read Jesus' words, and suddenly my heart changes, my attitude changes, and then I smile. But there's something even better than this teaching that Jesus gives us. What is better than the teaching Jesus gives us? Is that he gives us a new heart. Because we have a moral problem. What is our moral problem? It's our choices, so you need a moral solution. And what is that moral solution? It's love. It's mercy. It's God's mercy. And so he can go into the heart. He can clean it. That's the best gift Jesus gives us. So I want to remind you, this September, we've got these four spiritual growth programs coming up. Now, we went through them for the last two weeks. Now, some people are saying, whoa, so many. Which one do I choose? And the answer is just choose whatever helps you spiritually grow. So we're at a point in our parish's growth, we've hit a certain level of spiritual maturity. We can offer four programs at once because we've got great leaders. That's something to celebrate. It's not something to get overwhelmed by. Everyone here has different spiritual needs. We're trying to meet your spiritual needs. Let's quickly review your options. First, we have Alpha. What is the point of Alpha? Is to explore faith. Do you know anyone in your life who's, who's looking for more? Who's searching? Is there more to our life? Great thing about Alpha is there's no pressure. So you can see the dates there. If you like to take it, get some renewal, bring a friend. There you are. Next, we have faith study. So we're not sure yet if we can run this. I think we will be able to. It's going to come through. But what is the point of faith studies? To grow in faith. Not explore faith, to grow in it. Get closer to the heart of Jesus. So we're talking today about changing the heart. And changing the heart often happens when you're in conversation with other people. And faith studies guides that conversation. Next, number three is journey through scripture. That's for you disciples. You want to know the Bible better. Very simple. And finally, the marriage course. That's to enrich marriages. Seven weeks. I'd really ask all of you, could you think about someone who would benefit from Alpha or, or the marriage course? Because we're really good at taking care of ourselves. We're not so good at reaching out and taking care of other people's spiritual needs. So just think about that. Is there anyone you can invite? Jesus' teaching on defilement is not really heard that much today. And just, can I ask you to think about that? Do you think a lot of people in Canada embrace this teaching of Jesus? Or do you think they kind of reject it? So I definitely think they reject it. And I'll give you an example of this. So in July, during the height of the church burnings in Canada, a, a lady named Harsha Walia, executive director of the BC Civil Liberties Association, she tweeted this, burn it all down. So when people rightfully criticized this comment, one person defended her, saying, as usual, Canadian whiteness is gleefully tone policing and harassing a powerful racialized woman from telling the truth. So this woman defends Harsha Walia, uh, saying that it's external forces that are the, uh, the problem, it's, it's racism. But that's not what was happening. People were criticizing her comment, not her person. People should fight against racism, but you can't blame racism for every bad thing that happens to you, especially for your own freely chosen comments. But this keeps on happening more and more in our society. A lot of blaming. Let's blame the government for everything. Let's blame the patriarchy. Let's blame religion. There's very little talk about fixing the human heart. So of course we should fix all corruption. We should try. But who talks today about, let's fix the human heart? 
This is a picture of my uncle, Keith Bagu. And he got, there they are, uh, get, they got married at St. Anthony's in West Vancouver in 1963. He married my aunt. And in 1963 in Vancouver, some people wouldn't rent to them, wouldn't rent a place to them because of his skin color. But let me tell you why my whole family admires Uncle Keith. It's because he endured racism, but rose above it. I've known Uncle Keith my whole life. And he has always been, without fail, a man of class and a man of dignity. And he has no resentment, no bitterness in his heart. So he and Auntie Elizabeth, they fought against racism, but they never let it defile the heart. I wonder, do we ever hear stories about this? Do we celebrate stories like this of people rising above difficulty and racism, etc.? In 2003... Uncle Keith said to me, he said, Justin, if you, become a, if you become a priest, I'll become Catholic. And I said, okay. And Auntie Elizabeth said, oh, he's just saying that. But in 2014, Uncle Keith was baptized. And he chose to become Catholic. And I bring that up because as virtuous as Uncle Keith is, he still needs a savior. All of us need a savior. And so I just ask you to think about that. Do you know anyone in your life like Uncle Keith? Virtuous, but still needs God's mercy. And they're looking for it. Maybe you can think about inviting them. I finish now with a quote from Catholic author Matthew Kelly. Whenever I read this quote, it's like a balm, a soothing balm to my soul. I love it. He says, changing the world is an inside-out job. When we look to change the world, too often we look outside ourselves. When God looks to change the world, he looks deep within us, driving straight to the heart of the matter, human behavior. By changing ourselves, nothing can defile us.